Financial data is pretty boring, especially if you're not making money off of it. But there are times when the progression of stock prices matters to not just investors, but everyone. And those times are recessions, when prices drop dramatically across the board and the economy experiences a wholesale, sudden, damaging, and often unforeseen contraction. It shouldn't come as a surprise then that statisticians have worked hard to develop a toolbox to predict these kinds of rapid systemic changes in data in the market and in other similarly confusing systems. One particularly new and promising tool, which I want to talk to you about today, is called topological data analysis, or TDA for short. Now, the basic intuition behind TDA is understanding the shape of data. We understand shape by connecting the data points, connecting them like dots, and then counting the number of holes in that connected structure. For example, look at these two scatter plots. On the left, if we connect all the dots that are roughly close together, we have one really big hole in the middle. If we do the same on the right, we have two big holes. And these holes characterize the general shape of the data. The big question is, how can we quantify them? To do this, we employ a method called persistent homology. Now that's a big phrase, so let me break it down. Roughly speaking, the number and dimension of holes in a structure defines its homology, or its shape. Therefore, persistent homology is all about finding out which holes persist as we connect more dots. Let's return to one of our scatter plots. Imagine we draw a ball around each data point, and we gradually grow each ball over time. Now, there are two rules. One, when a ball intersects another point, we automatically connect the dots between those points. And two, when a ball connects multiple points, it makes a face, so not a hole. As you can imagine, the small holes appear and disappear quite quickly, but it's the big hole in the middle that stays the longest. Thus, we can quantify that hole's relevance by how long it survives, which then allows us to quantify the entire shape of the data. And that is a very powerful thing. Quantifying the shape of messy point cloud data is precisely the brilliance of TDA. How can TDA help us detect financial crashes? Well, in the context of finance, the data is often a simple one-dimensional time series. The price of the stock at hour one, then at hour two, hour three, and etc. In order to get a better reading on the shape of the data, we want to embed it in a higher dimensional space. That sounds really fancy, but all it really entails is picking a number, let's say three, and then plotting price one, price two, price three as point A in a three-dimensional coordinate system. We then plot price two, price three, price four as point B, and then price three, price four, price five as point C, and so on and so forth. Now we have a ton of data points in this three-dimensional space. The next step is to employ TDA, finally, not on the entire data, but on a sliding window through it. For example, we use TDA on points A through E, then on points B through F, then C through G, and so on. That way, we get a gradual reading on how the shape of our data is changing over time. And if that shape changes dramatically or in certain known ways, we can actually use it to predict, with some proven accuracy, when disaster is near. And that's, frankly, insane. Now, TDA has applications in finance, as well as computer vision, DNA sequencing, meteorology, and really any context where you're dealing with large, chaotic datasets. It has a growing research presence, but whether you use it or ever see it again or not, I hope you can appreciate its sheer mathematical beauty. Thanks for watching.